Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing safe and well. We're super delighted about the launch of our LD survey for today's session. Our focus today will be twofold. Uh, we're looking at understanding the social context of learning projects and enabling it via new age technology. This summit is very close to us since our core focus at Travis is also knowledge development via training at corporates and our Saturday live discussions. And we extend a big thanks to all of our viewers today for joining us for our first l and Summit session. I'm Sakshi Soi, the founder of Pravis Learning and Consulting, and I will be your moderator for today. And we welcome our experts on the panel, Mr. Manjit Mohan and Mr. Dexter Rodericks. Hi, Manjit. Hi, uh, Dexter. Hello. Hi, Sakshi. How are you doing, Sakshi? Very well, very well. Hope you're both doing well, too. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. So Manjit is currently heading learning and development at India Infoline Group. Prior to this, he was Associate VP of Organizational Learning at Kotak Mahindra. He comes with years of experience in talent development in the financial management sector and is passionate about the increasing role of technology in enhancing the impact of training. Dexter, on the other hand, comes with extensive experience in l and in the IT sector. He's currently heading L&D at Datamatics Business Solutions Limited. Dexter holds deep passion for the role of trainers, mentors, coaches in developing the youth of nation. And he has launched his own initiative to push this. We will hear about it as we move into the discussion. Thank you both for making the time for the discussion today. It's a pleasure to have you on the panel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure is ours as well. Yes. Thank you. Now, before we get started with the session, I have a quick request to all of our viewers. Please do feel free to drop in your questions and inputs on the comment section, and we will take as many as possible in between or towards the end of the discussion. All right, so getting started, diving into the discussion now. I'm going to start off with a question for both the panel members, uh, starting off with Manjeet on the importance of embedding social and emotional learning into training. What is the reason that community plays an important role or your social environment plays an important role in improving the impact of training? Manjit. Great. Uh, thank you, Sakshi. And I think um, uh, it's a very valid question, uh, especially at this uh, point in time. And I think uh, social and uh, emotional, both these aspects uh, would make more sense for us, the learning practitioners, uh, for the very reason that uh, it all existed in the learning curriculum so far. But today, the focus is being brought back specifically to look at are they being included in the right manner and what else can be really looked at for enhancing the presence of social and uh, emotional learning in uh, the re regular training academicia and calendars. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, schools today have actually picked up this in big scale and they have actually started bringing in live skills as part of their uh, training or learning curriculum. And I think that's that's the real uh, crux here when we talk about social and uh, emotional uh, learning. Having right. said that, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Having, having said that, uh, I look at it from a slightly different angle. Okay, for mm -hmm. me, social is... Uh, to bring in a concept or an environment wherein people learn from each other. Even in today's uh, uh, pandemic situation, countries are actually learning from each other. Leave, leave aside people, right? So that element of social learning, how do you bring in that element of social learning into organizations wherein people learn from their peers and you get away really from a teacher monotony uh, uh, learning process to a silent listener learning process wherein peers learn together and they come up with their own ideas, their own thought process. It's more of a collective learning process that organizations need to look at. That's the social bit of it. The emotional bit of it really comes in from looking at aspects of how do you manage stress? How do you man manage anxiety? How do you manage uh, virtual teams? All of, it, all of a sudden, people have been really put into a space wherein the IT sector, Dexter might be um, uh, the right person to comment on that, but for IT, it was always kind of 50-50 wherein people used to still work in the virtual uh, environment. But for a banking system, virtual came out to be something which is very new 
and nobody expected this that it would come all of a sudden and hit us and for people to really look at team management engaging with people giving them that flexibility ensuring that uh, there is emotional connect uh, uh, all of that became all of a sudden uh, something which they never thought about or it was never there in the curriculum uh, curriculum of learning and development so now to bring back these elements in a more structured manner to look at the emotions of people to look at uh, handling these emotions and giving those teams and managers do and equipping them with the right resources to really look at this in a more deeper sense that's where i think uh, emotional peace plays a very critical role very interesting very interesting perspective manji thanks a lot uh, dexter what is your perspective on this so first of all uh, sakshi thank you so much for uh, having me on the show and uh, i have to really uh, say that uh, what manjeet spoke about in terms of the social learning i'm so glad he brought about this topic of community based learning and then the emotional connect perspective so i'm going to share with you a little story uh, so the other day the director of an hr firm she told me of an anecdote where um, a person was speaking to his manager on a webinar on a zoom call and the grandmother was sitting in the background and this a chap was getting rogered by his manager and uh, for whatever reason and the grandmother jumps in takes over the call and she says that you can't talk to my grandson like this you know that's not the way to do it that's not the way to run business and she gives him a earful so uh, the question that we have to ask ourselves is that uh, uh, you know uh, what is what are we here to do as organizations you know as an organization it's important for us to be able to provide our employees with a very purposeful and fulfilling experience fair enough now in order for that to happen how does scl come into play and why is scl important so like manjeet rightly said scl has always been there in, in the developed world in the school systems and now in the developing world in our world it is coming up in uh, you know in our schools as well and the fact of the matter is you know uh, what scl is in schools is what daniel goldman called emotional intelligence in the workplace you know that that's really what it really is now uh, why is this important why do we need to have scl and let's quickly break it down so what is emotional intelligence self awareness self management so once you aware of self managing self awareness of social relationships and then uh, and then managing those relationships and forming a you know a decision to be able to take the organization forward that's it that's emotional intelligence why is it important for us as organizations and as leaders of training to be able to do this Uh, see, as an organization, you have two sets of responsibilities. One set of responsibility is for the people that are employed within the organization. So, for example, in this case, the gentleman was sitting on the uh, at the other end of the, of the webinar, as well as the reporting manager. And then there are those people who are beyond, which is the families, the communities, the societies in which your employees belong to. So, we have responsibility towards both these sets of people. Now, how does SCL play out in this? very simple uh, imagine if instead of this uh, person going through this experience where his managers you know uh, really had it uh, given it to him i imagine if there was an inspirational motivational leader sitting there and at the end of that conversation you know he turned to his grandmother and said wow i really love working for this organization i mean these people you know they make me feel great i mean my job is so fulfilling what happens in that case in that case the grandmother calls up her friends and she says wow look at you know what's going on with my with my grandson i mean he's enjoying working over here so you what have you done so you've got an ambassador for your organization and you've got in the employee and you've got a promoter for your organization in the grandmother in those in the other circle uh so uh, the question that you asked was what is the importance of scl and i can tell you one thing the most important person over here in scl at least at a corporate level our leaders uh the person on the other end who was was talking to the employee and the reason is because of the fact that you see leaders go through a lot of paradoxes you know there's headwinds in the industry there's upper management breathing breathing down their neck there are stakeholders who have so many shifts then you've got their employees who they have managed to retain so all of that you know that personalized coaching and the training and development for them so that they become role models and when people look at them and talk to them model they are leaders and those people then come out having those fulfilling experiences i think that's the extreme that's that's the essence of having the emotional intelligence piece in the organization and i'm going to uh, cite one survey really quickly uh prize waterhouse coopers if i remember their ceo uh, global ceo survey 
there were around 1500 ceos on that survey and they talked about you know the uncertainties in the in the world and in the environment and the economic outlook but the most interesting thing that came out from the survey was uh, the all the ceos who were the furthest in their learning journey for the next 12 months they were the most confident about their global economic outlook so this tells us that having and 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 they were mapped on things like you know social behaviors economic behaviors in terms of you know conditioning in terms of soft skills so those guys who had it already in place those are the people who are most confident so sel will give you the confidence to run your business so yes very very important very interesting i think from both uh, what i hear from both of you is one the context of peer learning right how do you learn from the people around you and the importance of that when you're in a physical in class setup and transforming that into the digital setup now right and the second aspect i'm looking at is the blurring lines between your professional and personal lives and the impact it can have on creating champions or brand ambassadors for yourself yes. uh, with the perspective manjeet and dexter i would now want to shift focus on the challenges today right uh, looking at let's say bringing the social aspect of peer learning let's focus on that aspect for now uh peer learning but bringing that experience out of in class on a digital platform that's not an easy aspect and that's something a lot of our lnd professionals are struggling with today because it's not that we had a lot of response time as covid hit us to implement the right uh, technology which would take into consideration the social or the community aspect also So Dexter from your perspective what are the kind of challenges we are having today in integrating the social aspect or the community aspect in a social distancing workplace in a remote workplace as of now and even going further in a social distance distancing right so very very valid question sakshi and you know i uh, at this point in time the organization that i work for datamatics is still remote working and i can't conjecture what's going to happen once we go back to the workplace so i'm going to stick to that one for now and let me tell you also why uh you know see facebook and google have said that till 2021 they want their employees right up to the summers to be working at home i don't know if you re- if you've read very recently as of yesterday or day before altation the company that makes jira and confluence you know is a community uh, software they said that my employees 5000 of them all across the world don't ever come back to work you know work from home forever and uh, all they said all of their offices are going to be repurposed and you can visit the offices whenever you want but we'd like to work from home so i'm going to stick to the the new normal right now that we are facing yeah. uh so in light of that uh, uh i can tell you this that uh, there are three uh, challenges right you asked the three challenges are very simple uh the first is does the organization have the maturity uh, to be able to implement this now when i say organizational maturity what are we talking about now you see uh msmes and smes small company small organizations you know for them who have outsourced training outsourced hr for them embedding uh social and emotional learning might just be a check in the box that's one and then the other end of the spectrum you have these behemoths who got offices all across the world i imagine if that huge company is like a human being and one hand is in india and in india they've got five different offices so the one in bangalore has a completely different culture the one in you know chennai has a different culture the one in calcutta has a different culture so so the maturity levels are so different so much as a learning head you've got to stand look back and say what is it that fits best within this environment what are the social you know and what are the emotional aspects that i need to inculcate of course they link up to the larger objectives but it's so localized and in some cases for the national learning head it is so nationalized so so that's the maturity that you have to understand first so that's the first challenge the second challenge is the trainer competency now trainer competency is because you know i remember you if you if you're running something like a developmental center now a dc or a development center is nothing but a simulation of how a person will perform in real life now think about it you've taken the entire simulation and you're placing it online so it's a simulation of a simulation and the trainer has now to start thinking about how do i go about doing this how do i use breakout rooms effectively to have my dc play run successfully how do i you know how do i get people to talk to each other how do i make sure that when you're doing case studies is their thought process coming through so all of that stuff is now playing out which means the trainers have to be really well equipped and uh, last but not the least is the learner mindset mm-hmm. uh what happened now you know and beautifully happened now is suddenly distance and technology have become the keywords 
you know so this was not there earlier earlier there was no distance and technology was what e learning you know the maximum we would do was sentiment analysis or you know hyper personalization but at the workplace but now all of a sudden all of this you know is has become the keyword so uh, how do we now uh, you know take all of these three factors which is organizational maturity trainer competency and learner mindset and reimagine ways in which we can embed social and uh, emotional learning now one of the things that we did at datamatics was the very first thing so let me let me start off by saying that we didn't have a perfect start from the training perspective we had some hastily put together webinars at the start and we did that and we said you know let's get everything online and we already had our learning management systems in place we already had a so that was a challenge that a lot of uh, organizations faced because there was zero response time you just had to shift everything you were doing in class earlier on a digital platform and and the company and datamatics did a fabulous job in moving you know overnight everything home so you know we as a training team had to respond really quickly uh, one of the things that we did uh, you know well very well was the fact that i'm proud to say this was the fact that you know uh, we have these tdts that you do for trainers we did an entire digital tdt because the fact of the matter is now you have to provide your employees with a completely digital immersive experience so you know when so for as sim simple things like when you are talking to your uh, when you are talking over a webinar you know in a classroom environment you have the trainer saying we and this is how we are doing it but in a digital webinar because it's so isolated and it's one on one you've got to ask them to reframe their language and start saying you as simple as that simple things like that to you know the visualizations that you put up on your screen so 70% of the world is what visual learners which means you know you have to be able to now put up images Uh, software. So we've got we got people to start thinking in that direction. So those are some of the things we did at a trainer competency level. Uh, the other thing is how do we get uh, leaders to collaborate effectively with their team? See, because one of the best things that are coming out of this entire experience is the fact that we are getting to understand how different individuals are performing at different times of the day. For example, you know there are peaks and valleys. and this helps us understand that oh this you know there are certain people who are most effective at night or certain people most effective in the daytime so how do we enable the bosses or the leaders to be able to work with those people without uh, and empowering them to say that i trust you hmm. i trust you and let's uh, you know let's work together on this without having to because there's no 9 to 5 anymore you know uh, and so 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 trust was an unintended benefit that came out of this entire experience for us you know uh, the, so if you were to ask me that while there are all these challenges while we are isolated while it's remote while we work on trainer competency i think an important thing to do now is to uh, guide employees and guide trainers in continuing and sustaining this learning digital experience uh, honing their skills and making sure that you know the like for example yesterday i did a workshop on unlimited power which was anthony robbins book and you won't believe the amount of people that tuned in and they were and this was nothing to do with id this is nothing to do with any of our business but this was all to do uh, this was like a leadership power talk in which went on for a good two hours and people were clued into that because uh, you know they were hearing something different so it's important to have these digital connects where we are uh, up, uh, where we are uplifting people in their thought processes and we are telling them you're not alone and one of the things that manjeet spoke about earlier very very important is on our lmss and you know all of the tools and technologies that you have please remember leaders out there that foster communities use digital to foster community based learning and peer based learning it is so powerful and within our organizations what we've been able to do successfully is have these little communities all over the place where you know trainers from individual businesses are now taking ownership to drive those communities so while they were there first earlier but uh, right now it's uh, you know the the trainer is, is so strongly empowered because of digital i think uh, uh, even from a future perspective this is a future proof way of you know going about and doing this so uh, uh, last but not the least i think the most important thing is after all of this is to measure your learning data you know so all these data points all these touch points that you are getting uh, in terms of your sentiments in terms of hyper personalization in terms of how ai is working in terms of uh, you know what are the agencies that we are providing people uh in uh, whether it's zoom is working whether teams is working with certain teams you know who are demographically a little bit uh maybe you know uh, multi gen not really millennials what's working for them what's not working for them 
to now to be able to start looking at this data. So for me, currently, the data that I have for my organization is the fact, very startling fact, is that, and this is very uh, startling, I had never realized this earlier, it seems 40% of the people who work for us like to be trained in the afternoon. <laughs> and another 30% like to be trained in the evening. I mean, never realized that, you know, we were, we were doing mostly training from morning to evening and with a focus mostly in the morning. But now we are realizing, at least in the digital world, you know, this is how they like it. So, so that's a startling fact. Now, what's the science behind it? You are still here to conquer that. But the fact is, you get these data points that will give you insights into how your workforce is performing and leverage them to align your business objectives to these data points. And and as you build um, this, yeah, 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 please go ahead. Yeah. So I'm looking at a couple of aspects that you've highlighted over here. One is, of course, the training competency, right? We've moved from uh, an instructor-led in-class training to a virtual ILT uh, format, which is not easy to implement. Somebody who, who was considered an excellent trainer in class in a physical space might be facing a lot of challenges today. And like you pointed out, it is important for us to focus on building trainer competency, make sure that they have the right resources, skill sets, and access to any information that would help them make this transition, right? Right, very right. good. And the second aspect is the learner ownership by choice. And here I would want to bring Manjeet in, where we spoke extensively about how you're moving that ownership of learning from just one side of the spectrum, which is your trainer, to also include learner, right? How do you use technology for that? How do you make sure that your LMS or collaboration tools are enhancing the space? Uh, Manjeet. Yep. So uh, I would really want to uh, step back a bit and go back to uh, the concept of SCL. Okay. And the reason why I would want to do that is because the base concept or the base uh, theme behind SCL is self awareness and self management. That is awareness of emotions and values. And how do you manage those emotions and values to really nurture and bring in relationships and take it to a conclusive process of decision making in organizations? Right. So it boils down to that specific individual and the emotions and values that the person carries. And if, honestly, if you ask me, it's very difficult for you to bring in those emotions, values, etc., from a physical space to a digital medium. The transition is not that easy. right? But if you ask me, is it possible? Yes, of course, it is possible. And that really starts from the culture that you build in organizations, and especially the learning culture that you build in organizations. Fortunately, I've been part of uh, India Infoline Finance and uh, uh, the vision of our chairman, Mr. Nirmal Jain, is to actually provide world-class learning experience to our employees. That's a statement that he makes. I want to ensure that I provide world-class learning experience. And that automatically had put me from day one under the scanner to look at what does this world-class learning mean, right? Is it technology? Is it content? Is it uh, social learning? Is it peer learning? So. World class is a very broad term and you have a lot of things which really uh, merge together to really come at a world class structure and a world class offering for our employees. Uh, so from day one at Info India Infoline, and it's been almost three and a half plus years that I've been with India Infoline, uh, we started or embarked on the journey of digital. And today, I would say we are actually slightly ahead of the curve when compared to others, peers and uh, uh, colleagues in the banking space or in the fraternity. Uh, because all our employees are immersed in the culture of digital learning, even at a pre-onboarding stage. So the moment a person gets an offer, he gets inducted into the company through our learning experience platform. And through that platform, he would really get to understand the culture, the values, the vision. He gets to meet key leaders, will look at their perspectives, and also get some sense of what is the business that they're actually going to be part of? Look at some of their colleagues, their testimonials, etc., all in video formats and some in uh, in an engagement mode. So it's like the waiting period that the person has, typically the notice period that the person has before he joins the organization. He's already inducted slowly into that culture of digital, into that culture of the organization. And then it becomes easier for us to really tag on and take that journey further to a larger scale when he's completely on board because he is now aware of the systems, the processes, the nuances, the workflows, etc. in the digital space. Because typically what you have seen is 
the moment you immerse an employee into the digital ecosystem or whether that be an lms or an lxp the first struggle is how do i navigate through the system because so far i have never been uh, never seen such a system and how do i navigate and that because of the fear of navigation it's not just at the base level employee i've seen even senior people struggling with navigations not knowing or because you need to really spend time to understand technology it doesn't come very easy to any, any of us even that we zoom if you want to really do a breakout you need to really understand how do you create breakout rooms otherwise you can't do that right so you create that culture and take them along the journey right from day one or right from birth that gives you an upper hand in terms of bringing people back to the culture of digital learning that's when the journey really starts and uh, i would say earlier lmss used to be uh, the tool for organization to really run it but i would say ki the world has actually progressed one step ahead wherein we are now talking about lxps or learning experience platforms so if you really ask me what's the difference between an lms and an lxp uh it's the real, the real difference is in lms it's more administrator driven you decide what to give you decide who learns you decide the workflows everything the admin or the learning team decides vis-a-vis when it comes to learning experience platforms it gives you the flexibility to leave that learning experience completely as an ownership of the learner hmm. the learner can actually decide what i can learn he can go and curate and decide what kind of a content should i get on a daily basis uh it is self paced more self paced because i can decide my own learning schedules i can be part of learning journeys which i decide which i would want to be part of it's there is no, no nothing which is a force fit of learning there it's kind of an open platform wherein you provide the learner with an ecosystem around which will really help him to choose what he wants to learn and from whom he wants to learn i think that's the biggest difference as against we as learning practitioners running behind them saying that you have to do this you have to do this and that, that's the re- very reason why even you said old earlier used to have 5% adoption rates 10% adoption rates but look at them today in this pandemic people are actually going and accessing content because they want content so there is nobody who's pushing moves it's automatically getting consumed and all these digital media and all these digital partners who are there today are recording forex kind of business growth and that's primarily because people are now not forced to go in and consume they are going there voluntarily to consume content and at the end of the day believe me content is still the king mm-hmm. your platforms you can have best of platforms you can have best of trainers you can have best of everything but if your content is not right and if your content is not provided at the right time that the person requires it doesn't make sense for a, a learner and uh, rightly said like dester i think there are two th- important things in uh, learning today one is learner engagement and the second thing is data analytics without these two digital learning will not make progress in organizations the reason why learning learner engagement comes into play is one is you have given a lot of freedom to the learner he can really decide on taxonomies basis taxonomies he can get ai curated content right uh, to his doorstep Uh, and at any point in time which he chooses to really want he can even configure the time in which he would want to consume a content uh, he can uh, decide the skill sets that he would want to really build today if you look at organizations and trainers i have a pool of 15 trainers with me but their expertise is limited to certain spheres i can't expect a trainer to be a jack of all trades he still will come with some expertise which is either technical or product or soft skills or uh, digital but the learner today wants lot many more things than what is available with us so how do we really cater to that requirement especially when it comes to life skills you never know what a life skill is and you never know what the requirement of a person or an employee from the life skill space is so that's when the lxp is come into play wherein they allow you to set in your skill requirements up front and basis that the ai curated content is actually fetched from the world wide web because today google is the repository of content that is available right even okay. trainers go back to google and uh, get content for their trainings sure so the moment you set in those uh, learning goals and the skill goals that you want the system automatically fetches that content and gives you so it actually brings down the level of dependency on trainers also and you can get to the content its specific content which you think makes sense for you at to learn at that point in time that's one second is you are not getting restricted to a specific co- type of content 
if you are a kinesthetic learner or a visual learner or an auditory learner you can choose what kind of content would you want and the system will actually give you that kind of content and uh, the data and research all, all, always proves and rather in, in fact it says that going forward video based learning is going to be the in thing in learning uh, the process because people tend to look at videos and learn more and it's easy for you to really bring in uh, certain live elements and live actions and uh, uh, live interactions also through video so video based content is the way forward from a content uh, uh, recipe perspective and uh, today at ifl we typically have started following the netflix model of learning wherein if you go to our lxp you will see only videos nothing else and mm. it's absolutely when i say netflix is absolutely resonating to netflix because you can choose to follow a con content you can choose to unfollow a content there are specific themes in netflix you have action romance comedy drama etc you have learning themes which is process product technical behavioral soft skills leadership uh, thoughts of the day and you have specific themes and then also you have one section which is absolutely wide open for you to uh, which tells you hey look if you want to decide your skill you set up your skill and we will give you content directly curated from the net so it's some content which is proprietary co content something which is there in a model which you can really pick can choose and make your own learning journeys and learning paths and the third thing is uh, everything is available online which is uh, right uh, at your fingertips for you to really go and grab and learn it but it doesn't stop there this is where the learning engagement really begins right because you always and especially in the indian context when so far learning has been a push uh, event in organizations you can, suddenly can't expect learners to transit and be pulled to the content that you have if you need learners to be pulled that means you need to have that kind of a strong content which really pulls in even the byjus of the world if you look at they have the best of content they have brought in content from disney but that still if the child doesn't resonate to that content and the style of presentation it doesn't really help you bring in and it's my personal experience i have in, in fact invested brought it but my uh, both the children really don't uh, use it because they say give hey, me look we see all this in our tv so what's so different so everybody is looking at different content and different content at different point in time so are you able to really give that learner that specific content in the specific format at the right time that really makes a difference in learning and that really pulls people into the learning ecosystem and for that you do a lot of you need to really do engagement events and when i say engagement it's not the hr engagement typically that happens it's a learning engagement that you do you do something with a specific purpose and an intended learning inside and uh, in ifl we have been doing a lot of these engagement events which which are really forming people together collective learning and then they share learning process with the rest of the ecosystem and also look at building the tacit or leveraging the tacit knowledge which already exist like i said the trainer can't be the king of all right so what we do is we also try and leverage the tacit knowledge of the business stakeholders bring them on board that's that's the engagement piece i can actually go on but i uh, due to time constraints let me let's take that engagement to that piece the second thing is data analytics you need to really be and i would say the the skill of a trainer today if you really ask me what should the trainer be equipped with is trainers need to be data scientist if you are not able to analyze and understand data you will never be in a position to really give what the learner wants because data throws you lot of insights lot of insights and it clearly tells you who is consuming your content at what time and like dexter rightly said even we have found in our organization saying that 11:30 to 12:30 is the time where in maximum content consumption happens and typically we were like 11:30 to 12:30 is like nobody would be interested in coming for any trainings so there is a typical mindset that plays and only data can give us those insights and insights and and believe me we have been really able to look at who does what at what point in time is it the senior management who is more glued or the lower middle management or the junior management who is glued what kind of content is there a repeat consumption of content how many times is the person coming back and reading that content or consuming that content again a lot of insights that data really gives us and if you really put in some time it also requires investment of time if you really put in the time to understand the data i'm sure it will really give you 
lot of insights which can take your learning to a different experience and a different journey altogether very interesting manjeet there are so many uh, thoughts and questions that have come to my mind through the entire chat with uh, you and dexter uh, i will bring up one aspect which is the transition to technology right we really have not got into a space where we know how to increase or improve engagement while on a digital platform uh, what kind of webinar technologies are we supposed to use what kind of methodologies do we use to interact and engage your learners and you brought out a very interesting aspect of a netflix model and giving the entire ownership of you know uh, to the learner themselves learning by choice the second aspect that you spoke about and dexter also highlighted was the data analytics bit how your trainers need to be equipped with the skill set today it plays a very important role to understand uh, the example was when your audience will be engaged or when your learners will be engaged the maximum another aspect of this is being able to understand the roi which a lot of companies continue to struggle with you have learning projects you do uh, invest time from a training aspect and from for the learners as well off the floor they have to invest time to make sure they're attending and also uh, adapting to the new concepts that they have been taught so that entire transition what's the roi of it and data plays a very very important role in understanding that uh so this brings me to a question about the changing role of lnd professionals today right at there was a point of time where the requirement was you should know how to facilitate in a class and you should know how to create content but that role has widened or the entire horizon is so much bigger than that now uh, i'll bring in dexter over here dexter what are your thoughts about the shift in lnd professionals or how our role is standing out now so uh, first of all uh, sakshi i would like to thank uh, manjeet for bringing out those uh, beautiful concepts about data it's so close to my heart so i was very glued into what he was saying and i think it's something that we definitely connect as you know learning professionals resonates now across the industry now uh, the question that you asked uh, uh, you see uh, there are two kinds of skills that are very imminent in this day and age of course like i told you earlier we did this entire digital ttt with the trainers of the organization so one very straight up skill is the fact that you have to be able to understand how to engage with the audience and how to be able to deliver a very productive learning experience in this new environment that's one and the second is that you need to be able to as a trainer now also uh, look at the environmental impact uh in i think it was in 1991 when the us forces were in afghanistan and iraq and they came up with the term hookah hmm. you know and uh, so right now we are in hookah you know more than any other time in the history uh, of uh, of learning development and all of that so uh, one of the things that trainers need to be very uh, strong with and it's a developed skill is learning agility hmm. you know to be able to understand what are the shifts what's going on you know how can we respond to our clients how can we provide value to our clients how can we provide value to our internal stakeholders our internal teams uh what are the new learning opportunities and really keep your eyes and ears open to be able to create and co-create those experiences with their businesses and with stakeholders that's one for sure uh the other bit is earlier we were thinking a lot about here is a process there is a problem with this process there is a defect mitigation plan with the business and how can we fix it as a learning team as an enabling team now it's shifted so much from the business to the individual that design thinking has come to the forefront so having empathy with the learner and looking at how to solve the learner's behavioral challenges is another very important skill that a trainer needs to possess uh the third one is business ownership uh more than any other point in time today uh the idea one of the things that i've always told my team over here and and we are striving towards this as a goal is to turn training into a profit center you know right now with the global economic outlook and how uh, things are emerging it's very important that we take ownership of the business of training as a training team training the training team as all, training teams all across the world have always been looked at as an investment and we've got to be able to now you know more than any other time uh, show demonstrate the return of that investment so how can we build uh, knowledge and revenue streams within the organization and also market that outside the organization i think is an important skill uh the fourth one and for me personally the most important one amongst all of these is the skill of storytelling you know uh, think about it you go for a movie 
and you go to a movie you know say a nice movie and maybe amita bachchan's in that movie for example i'm old school so i'll bring up the older heroes and uh, for years later you can actually mimic what amita bachchan said at that particular scene in that particular instance and you can replay that but you ask a person what his boss said to him yesterday and he'll kind of shrug it off and he's probably forgotten about it right to, to bring to life uh, and immerse sensory and and i'm going to rephrase that and say sensory so storytelling is so important as a skill for trainers you know it's something that doesn't come naturally to everybody and it's something that has to be groomed and developed so training leaders have to because uh, right now we you know i'll give you an example uh, just as of two days ago a, a student from yale sued yale because he said that you know they are not able to provide me with the in depth learning experience the in person experiences uh, that i would get online so i want my money back and this is he was not the only one as i you know delve deeper into that research there was columbia there were other institutes as well so the fact of the matter remains that how do we now like i was telling you earlier do a simulation of a simulation and an important skill to be able to immerse your learners is to be able to tell stories anecdotes analogies very basic very simple principle of adult learning and that's how you can hook your learner into what you're doing so uh, you know uh, they say the four skills are visual auditory written and then kinesthetic how can we now as trainers as facilitators engage our learners to embed all of these skills during the course of learning so you know when you're training them uh, one of the things that we found very useful was the fact that more than uh, cartoon figures or caricatures if we used humans in in our uh, powerpoints for example uh, you know the fact that they saw human faces and they saw you know human expressions gave them a better sense of familiarity with the concept that you're training them on versus just text heavy literature heavy or cartoons for example or animations for that matter so how can we now start you know uh, getting more into this environment where uh, we are building on a you know getting these uh, getting our associates or getting our executives to be able to see and learn then talk during the learning experience and keep it so interactive keep it very memorable keep it very flexible and at the same time get them to write while you're doing this you know so we have uh, what we've done is you know we invested in tools where we have blackboards which we write on and the entire experiences get captured on screen and learners are doing this along with us now this is something you probably already seen in schools and mac home tablets and things like that but we never really had to invest in all of this before while we are at work but we are doing it now and times that it obviously is when you put them into breakout rooms and you get them to talk to each other and monitoring their entire experience so being able to be this master storyteller and get them into this complete sensory experience so once they are out of it like that amita bachchan movie they come back and they say oh, this was a beautiful experience i remember what happened at the start this is what i did and here are my key takeaways from this and i'll never forget this and that is a skill that i would you know we are personally grooming and developing our trainers on and they're enjoying it they're loving it so all of the wonderful stuff like design thinking learning agility storytelling and business ownership this is this gives you a holistic a uh, way of leaving a very strong digital footprinted experience to take learning to to become a more holistic experience so so that's that's something that i say uh, trainer the god excellent i think that's a very very helpful uh, perspective dexter we are getting a lot of comments from our audience also in terms of the challenges we are facing or everybody is facing today to make this transformation onto the digital platforms and how do you make sure that you have the right skill set to be able to deliver the same impact with your training sessions uh manjit i will invite you here from your perspective of let's say uh we've understood a bit of soft skills right or your cognitive skills to be able to deliver the right piece of training from a technology perspective uh what are your thoughts as to how equipped a trainer needs to be today or any other skill that you could think about your views over here Great, uh, and I think I would start with uh, commenting Dexter, and he is a person who is walking the talk today uh, uh, when it comes to storytelling, and I think that that's that's something which is very very critical, right? And uh, I, I can see that he is actually walking the talk, and I'm sure his trainers also would be doing the same, and I think that's very important because today learner want doesn't want to understand uh, theory and uh, uh, practice; he really wants to understand that how is it really being connected to me, and that connect. you can only build through stories right and, and that's why i think storytelling as a uh, skill is something which is very important second 
from a technical perspective the trainer needs to be well versed in navigating the technology that he is using whether it be zoom or uh, jeans or uh, ms uh, tools whatever that be he should be hands on and he should be an expert in terms of navigating through the system and the tool to a large extent uh the third thing like i said earlier is the trainer needs to be very sharp and very good in an- learning analytics you can't run away from numbers right earlier what used to be happen in organizations is there is a central team which will push you mis and nobody used to look at mis beyond numbers today mis doesn't get restricted to numbers there is data insight and there is data inference so you just can't look at numbers and replicate that excel sheet in a gra- nice uh, uh, sophisticated chart either a pie chart or a, a graph and say ki look this is how the numbers look at the first question is tell me what's the inference what do you want, what have you inferred out of this data right and hence uh, uh, the person to really transform from looking at data as numbers to data as uh, logic is something which is very important for trainers uh, again when i say ki that uh, when you're taking a session the transition has happened from a physical space to a virtual space so you need to really engage the audience in the virtual space and typically when you have a larger audience when you have 25 30 kind of odd audience in your uh, sessions how do you ensure that people are still engaged glued on to what you are really talking about because you really don't have an insight in terms of what they are doing they could be also switching on their uh, switching off their videos and might be doing their own work right so how do you really ensure and leverage these platforms because platform also has this capability of really giving you those insights saying that who is engaged who is not engaged what is the extent of engagement etc so are you really being able to bring in that sense into or that transformation from a classroom to uh, the digital space uh, again from body language perspective when it's digital i think for trainers it becomes more imperative to be always on the guard because you are the person in focus all the time right and you can't really um, take chances to be off guard for any reason and hence the preparation that you do before a session is absolutely very critical and the engagement and that um, that interaction that you do with your audience that becomes very very critical and that's a skill again you might be a very good uh, uh, trainer in the classroom but the moment you shifts online and you see that people are not responding you don't get a response then you tend to be finicky you don't know what to do and you also become low in your enthusiasm to de- deliver the content and a lot of things will manifest from that perspective so how do you really be self assured and project that confidence online because the executive presence that you can bring on screen is also very important we talk about executive presence normally in the typical classroom or a, in a physical environment perspective but executive presence i think here is also very very critical and uh, everything right from your expressions to your gestures to your um, uh, words that you use like like such as instead of we and you so all those subtle subtle nuances that really makes a difference and if you are not really understood that that really takes off the tangent and the conversation and that objective to a different uh, world altogether uh and to look at the skills um, uh, to come back to the skills i think i am looking at in three uh, specific uh, uh, perspectives one is from a data perspective earlier it was predictive data which became progressive and today we are actually looking at cognitive data that means following the user to the last mile and providing him the content when he requires the content so you need you earlier it was predictive when you said you hey, look this is the trend and i think this would be the trend and hence this is going to happen then from that we got into progressive we started following the user immediately and think look this is where he goes let me give that content where he is today now it has become cognitive where in here even more focused in terms of not just following the user and not just providing the content but co- getting that content con- contextualized so content to context that is the real key so that's the shift that is really happening in the data perspective from a content perspective the mode of content changed from uh, uh, presentations to e learnings to animations to videos to simulations to learning in the flow of work so content from that perspective today the ask is the content needs to be provided in the flow of work you can't expect the learner to really step out learn come back and then practice 
you need to ensure that the content is actually provided in the right flow of work so that there is no distraction for the learner he gets to consume the content right then right there learn move on with this process and the third thing from a, a trainer perspective is trainers need to shift gears and become data scientist i think these are the three large and broad uh, areas of development that you see in the learning space very interesting uh, so i come from a data analytics background as a project manager and it's a delight to see the use and the importance of data being applied into the learning and development arm today uh, the shift from just like you pointed out mandi to move from uh, a historical trend analysis right you have historical data and you see okay this is what people like and then you figure out what to do next to making it prescriptive and cognitive has been a long journey but also a very very fruitful one another aspect that you brought out was uh, learning during your work you can't step out in the flow of work yeah in flow of work right and you can't step out but you need to be delivered the content that you require or the information or the knowledge that you require while you are at your workspace itself how does that work i mean how how do you see that happening or how is it implemented at iifl today uh, the kind of technology you are using or the format or the methodology of delivery how is it getting delivered so at iifl what we have is uh, we have two things that we have implemented one from a new joiner perspective wherein a person needs to get familiarized with certain processes or system workflows hmm. so what happens there is you provide a simulated work environment or a uat experience what we call it as that is a, an experience which is not taking you to the real work environment but as the background it's actually storing data as if you are actually operating in the real environment so a virtual environment or a simulated environment with real inputs uh, which will really help that person to practice and practice multiple times because in the real system or in a real crm or in a real software uh, your mistakes are never pardoned because that's something which is a customer interface you can't make mistakes in a customer interface here you get to do those multiple times learn from your mistakes because the system itself will throw back saying that hey look you can't progress because you have in, entered a uh, wrong data input in a real system you can't really take those chances so we try and make those virtual cloud based simulations available so that people can really invest that time and practice the second is we are actually exploring uh, it's still at the exploration stage we'll soon go live with it is we are trying to bring in learning into this workflow of systems wherein we are trying to Either that be so we have Facebook at work which is implemented in our organization. We have our LMS or LXP which is implemented. You have uh, um, tacit knowledge which is resting somewhere else with uh, trainers. So what we are trying to look at is bring all this together to one ecosystem, wherein the learner can really pull in this information from any environment, whether that be from an LXP or whether that be from a Facebook uh, Facebook at work. or from any other crm or other systems where data and uh, learning uh, content is stored so giving him the choice to pull that data from multiple sources and not just be restricted to either an lms or an lxp or, uh, workplace to really learn content or get consume content from the third thing uh, is embedding this knowledge nuggets within the workflows through simulations so you ensure that when the person is actually doing his crm process or in, in any system flow work processes you give him some knowledge nuggets in the form of videos or articles or um, uh, chatbots or support which you can quickly refer back to and come back and really start the process so I, in the workflow i'm stuck and i want to understand ki what is the next step immediately you have a bot who says ki hey it seems you are stuck do you need help yes what is it that you need i need to understand what's the next step or where do i input this specific information of the customer it then takes you through that simulated process says ki look you need to go from here click here and then input the specific data so bringing in back a learning ecosystem through artificial intelligence or through bots and pulling content from different sources and making it available right in, in the flow of work that's that's really uh, the game changer uh, for us at this point in time I can totally imagine. I think that's the way forward because the way learners learn today, including myself, I'm not, I'm sure you've experienced it too. Is when you're uh, there's a problem or a challenge in front of you, you straight away go looking for an answer on how to solve that problem. 
it's very rare that you'll go and pick up an entire uh, umbrella of a course, pick that up, learn it, and then be able to apply it 100% at your workplace. While that is one format, sure, but uh, learning in the flow of work is definitely the future of learning, bite-sized learning. I have a specific question. I go ask the chatbot, and I get a response for it. That's, that's a brilliant uh, use of technology right there, I guess. So uh, thanks a lot, Manjeet, for sharing this uh, detail with us. And it's only also very inter interesting to note how the team dynamics are changing from center of excellence where I have my own specialization, my coworker who's also a trainer or in the team of L&D has their own specialization. We are moving into a more dynamic team uh, system or format, right? Like each one of us needs to have multiple skills today. So excellent growth for L&D as well. Here now, I would, towards the closing, um, we don't have a lot of questions, but we have a lot of appreciation from people who are talking about uh, the entire discussion of moving on the digital platform and how this entire transition can be done. Uh, the aspects that we've touched upon uh, in terms of data analytics or the use of data to make sure that LND does not stay only a cost center, but it can actually turn into a revenue generating or a profit making center too. The role of the LD professionals in making sure that engagement is happening even on a digital platform. And so many more different aspects that we've spoken about today. Uh, towards the end, what I would want to ask both of you would be the focus or the top skill sets that your industries require for the benefit of our viewers today. So I'll start with Dexter over here. Dexter, what are the top skill sets that you see? Or what is the focus that LD has when you're training your people, right? There's a, a percentage where you would spend more time on uh, skill-based training versus interpersonal training, or what is more relevant and very important in the industry today. Uh, thank you, Sakshi. Well, uh, uh, first of all, once again, uh, uh, great insights from Manjeet, especially about learning being plugged into the work. I think that's exactly the way to go. And that's what we're doing here at Datamatics as well. So, you know, glad to see that as an industry, we are uh, sailing in the same boat in the same direction. Uh, so I think I touched on these bits earlier, but I'll I'll rearticulate them again. Uh, first and foremost, it's, it's uh, learning as a skill set uh, in today's world uh, because of the fact that it's so digitally enhanced and everything is is really digital. Uh, first and foremost, it's important for trainers and the and L &D professionals to see what kind of value they can provide to the business. It's extremely important because you're sitting at home, you can get very disconnected from the realities of what your operations teams, what your BD teams, uh, what your revenue generators are doing. And so it's extremely important to have those connects in place all the time. So learning connects, digital connects is very, very important, very crucial. And uh, that's a skill set, which is collaboration. So collaboration is really amplified in today's day and age. So if you got a green in collaboration in your last appraisal, it should be bright green this time. You know, it has to really amplify. So that's extremely important. That's, that's the first one. Uh, the other thing is uh, boundarylessness. You know, uh, certain people learn in different ways. You have to have more empathy for your learners. They might be learners who are very good uh, consumers of video content. And then there are learners who are very good consumers of audio, which is of course, the minority uh, so how and then there are people who like to write and learn so how do you you know uh, and embed this boundarylessness within your training style within the organization and have empathy for a variety of learners whether it's leadership learners uh, whether it's frontline learners you know so all sorts of of those which you want to be able to take into account for uh, the third bit that's also very very important is uh, a lot of so manjeet one of the points that he spoke about was uh, trainers being data scientists. Another point that I would like to add also to that is trainers now have to become content creators. So, you know, the the time has uh, elapsed, I think, from when we had these large content teams who would provide content to the trainer. Uh, now I think uh, those teams have to start having greater synergies where the trainers have to have a larger say in the kinds of content that you're putting out there because this entire experience, like we are talking on this uh, stream yard now, this entire experience is controlled by one person. And that is not the content team. So either the content team, you know, has a very close synergy with the trainers, the trainers start picking up content and using and using their ideas and innovation to be able to drive that kind of content. So that's extremely important. 
And I've seen that the trainers who had the best content uh, are the ones who are winning this digital experience at, at this point in time. Yeah, uh, in the marketing world also, we know that content is king. That's what drives traffic to websites. That's what drives trainees to webinars. So it, that parallel is very strong here as well. Yeah, so that's that's the third one. And uh, the last one which I spoke about earlier, uh, which is being able to uh, understand what the needs of the organization are in terms of value. How can you as a trainer be a brand ambassador for your organization? And this is a beautiful platform. Now look at this. Manjeet and I are here today. We are talking about you know what our organizations are doing and the world is listening. So uh, the idea is to be able to provide this kind of exposure to uh, your organization, bring in talent who can you know help develop your organization, and at the same time um, look at how you can turn your training business into a profit center and make training into a consulting business. So it's internal consulting and external consulting as well. I think trainers now need to start wearing the consulting hat more strongly than they would earlier and be able to add revenue to their organization. So these are the uh, three, four key areas that I think trainers really need to step up their game on. Perfect. Uh, any other closing notes from your end, Dexter? I think uh, uh, as a closing note, uh, but there's one thing that um, you know i uh, uh, see the, the webinar is uh, this is all recorded so what you say is in it for posterity yeah. right um, uh, while we can be very kind and forgiving to ourselves on what we are saying and how we are saying uh, another point that manjeet made nice strongly echo is that you have to have this really strong executive presence on screen you know so it's extremely important in the way you present yourself and the words that you speak because you get recorded and uh, uh, so the wonderful Anne Sexton once said, said, words and eggs have to be handled with care because words once spoken and eggs once spoken are very difficult to repair. And believe me, in the digital world, this goes through more than any other time because you can't walk up to the person and shake his hand and say, I'm sorry. You know, what you see is what you get. So it's extremely important for trainers to put their best selves forward, uh, think about their learners. And put themselves in the and really put themselves in the proverbial shoes of their learners and understand what their learners want and train and, and deliver in that manner and represent their organizations to the best of their abilities. And I think uh, uh, we can make that impact within the organization, outside the organization, and uh, also a very wonderful time to uh, look at how you can work towards building the nation. If I may add. Uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do practically is, you know, look at how we as facilitators and trainers, uh, and this and this could be anybody, anybody who has a voice, anyone who wants to stand up and speak to an audience is a trainer. Anybody who wants to stand up, it could be a doctor, a preacher, or, you know, a speaker, a teacher, anybody who wants to disseminate knowledge. So help people who can do this. And these are the people who will help build and foster communities within the country. And our country, like the Prime Minister rightly said, you know, will become self-reliant. So if we can do this within our organizations, we can do it for the country as well. And we have a show that's launching uh, next month. Uh, this, this month, actually, we have a soft launch on the 15th. And then on Guru Purnama, we have a large launch. But that's called the Trainer Show. And this is what the show is all about, is to be able to reskill the uh, able to reskill uh, people in the country so they can build their communities and make India self-reliant nation. And, uh, and hope to see you and Manjeet and, and some of the viewers on the show there too and help us uh, make India the great nation that we once was and we are progressing towards now. Thanks a lot, Dexter. Uh, Manjeet, your viewpoints on uh, one, the you know shifting role of LND, let's say, and something that you would like to share with our viewers today to help out our co-workers. Uh, great. From, uh, from a uh, LND perspective, I think, uh, I would take it slightly one step ahead from where Dexter left us in terms of uh, saying that a trainer needs to be content curators or content designers, right? Mm -hmm. I think I would look at it slightly uh, 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 step ahead, wherein I would say the objective is to make the learner himself the expert in content. Because today, you really can't control the learner in terms of what is the content that he really wants. And at IFL today, what we are trying to do is, one, leverage the tacit knowledge that exists. Because that's a huge, huge repository of knowledge that exists with various people spread across in the organization. So how do you leverage that tacit knowledge? Second is empower the learner to be a content curator. Let him bring the content that he wants to learn. And let him share that content with his peers and create that ecosystem of social learning. 
because i because if i as a learning practitioner start starts pushing my content or my trainer's content to the audience there is a limit to which i can push but if the learner brings in his own content to the table and feels the value of the content the consumption would be high and his efforts to really make it large also would be high so make the learner the ambassador of his learning content and give him the choice to self curate and bring in content to organizational context so i think that's the freedom of choice that we need to give uh, our learners today and that will take them to uh, the next levels of uh, glory from a training perspective from a skills perspective what we are looking at in the organization obviously life skills because today the pandemics has actually taught us that survival is the necessity right everybody left out everything saying that look i just want to survive today and that's the biggest grace that i'm looking for and i think life skills if you don't have life skills that that survival itself becomes a challenge and how do you really bring in life skill and bring in more focus into of life skills in organizations that's the skill building part of course emo- emotional intelligence problem solving conflict management uh, storytelling all these are aspects which would really gain importance and uh, the skills that we look forward to really build in our managers last but not the least with this work from home culture and this situation really looking like uh, going into an expanded phase of 2021 and 22 i think uh, sensitizing managers to really give that flexibility even in a work from home environment because today we say ki work from home i am giving you every flexible everything that you require to really be at your own pace and at your own uh, time and at your own convenience to really deliver but honestly if you step back and look at there are a lot of people who do, does micromanaging because of one thing which is lack of trust right so bring in that element of trust give that freedom and flexibility to the uh, employee let him deliver it and ask or rather validate outputs and not inputs give them flexibility for inputs validate outputs i think that's the message uh, to uh, all my colleagues in the learning fraternity Wow. Uh, thanks a lot, Manjeet. And like you rightly said, uh, it is extremely important to make sure that you're laying the trust upon your employees and making sure that you're focusing on output, the value that is being generated, rather than the minor nuances that go behind making sure that it's uh, the output is coming out. And Dexter pointed out in that note as well that there's a lot of focus on building your leaders today to make sure you're driving. value or that kind of a leadership quality so this brings us to the end of the discussion and uh, a big thank you to both of you for joining us today and a huge thanks to all of our audience as well but before we jump off uh, don't forget to tune in on 22nd august for our second session dedicated to the evnr and our guest next next to next week which is 22nd of august will be mr nitin call who is the head and in deep at reliance retail again a big thank you manjeet a lot of thanks dexter for joining us today and making time for the discussion thank you thank you pleasure sakshi and uh, nice meeting you dexter on this we'll keep stay connected you do you do manjeet thank you, thank you so much